Hi muckers, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we are going to talk about what is happening with Jimmy Fallon. Now, oh, the past 24, 48 hours have not been good for Jimmy Fallon or Jimmy Fallon's PR team. Um, because it seems like everything around him and his uh, persona and company are crumbling. And I'm very intrigued to read this because out of all of the late night shows, Jimmy Fallon's probably the only one that I would watch a be it cringy, I feel that he's the only one I could find enjoyment in. Um, see, now the cringy moments from the show are flashing back to me. Um, I don't know. I'm not really a fan of any of the like late night talk shows. Um, but let's get into what is happening with him. I really don't know. Um, so we're going to go through this together. Uh, before we get into it, please make sure you're subscribed to my second channel. Um, I'm daily vlogging over there. We're on day 10 right now and it'll be pinned down below. Come over if you want. All right, let's get into it. So this is a Rolling Stones article, and it says, Chaos, Comedy, and Crying Rooms. Inside Jimmy Fallon's Tonight Show, 16 current and former staffers say that Fallon's erratic behavior spoiled their dream of working on The Tonight Show. 16? Oi. Oi. Jesus. It was a particularly dense day on the set of The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. The host, known for his warm um, presence on screen, was acting especially dismissive and irritable during production meetings, a former longtime employee tells Rolling Stones. Then he stumbled through rehearsal in front of it. Oh, I wonder if this is going to talk about... There's been a lot of talks behind the scenes for many, many, many years. I wonder if this article has to do drunk okay they are gonna talk about it um there have been a lot of um talkings behind the scenes particularly within the journalist world that uh jimmy fallon um drinks a lot um and drinks a lot during work hours and you know that kind of makes it a bad work environment um so i was literally scanning for the word like drink or alcohol or drunk because it's something that i've heard from a lot of journalists um specifically whenever i've been um in um, these parties at VidCon, actually, where they talk about their experiences like interning and stuff. And it was last year that I heard for the first time these kind of things. Um, and I didn't know whether or not they had any truth to them. I also didn't really look into it because the most I heard was that he was um, sloppy reading his lines. So I don't know anything further than that. But that is something that I knew a little bit about, but I didn't know if I believed it because Every, anything I was told was that, oh, he would show up drunk to most showings and he wouldn't be able to read the teleprompter. Never heard anything about, like, a toxic work environment, anything further than that. So let's get into it. Um, okay. He stumbled through rehearsal in front of a studio audience who typically sit in on rehearsal for the late night show. Employees who spoke to Rolling Stones about their experiences working on the tonight show say that it's common knowledge behind the scenes that there are good Jimmy days where Jalen or where Jimmy Fallon, sorry, put both together, where Jimmy Fallon's wit and charm and creativity are on full display and bad Jimmy days. This was a bad Jimmy day, according to the employee. They say that Fallon seemed to be confused during the rehearsal that day in 2017 when he crossed out jokes on the piece of paper he was holding. Um, he riffed with the audience for a bit and then quizzically looked back down on the same sheet of paper. He couldn't remember he had just crossed it out himself, the employee said. I was like, oh my god, he seems drunk. He doesn't know what he's doing. This could be awful. This could be the end of the show right here. Another staffer say they too witnessed the incident in front of a live studio feed inside their office. According to two current and former 14 employees, how do, this is my question for like journalists, like how do they find people and have this many go on the record? Like, do they message every single employee and be like, do you agree with this? Has this happened to you? Like, is it a case of that? Because how do you get that many people, 14? Are you messaging, like, every single employee and, like, trying to figure out if they agree or disagree? Or, like, what? Are they coming forward? According to two current and 14 former employees, The Tonight Show has been a toxic work environment for many years. Far outside the boundaries of what's considered normal in the high-pressure world of late-night TV. They say the ugly environment behind the scenes starts at... 
the top with Fallon's erratic behavior and has trickled down to its ever-changing leadership teams. Nine showrunners in its past nine years, which is not good, who seemingly don't know how to say no to Jimmy. Former employees describe The Tonight Show as a tense and pretty gloom atmosphere, with some alleging that they were belittled and intimidated by their bosses, including Jimmy Fallon himself. Employees describe being afraid of Fallon's outbursts and unexpected, inconsistent behavior. Many of these staffers voiced their concerns through HR, but problems at The Tonight Show would always persist. Seven former employees say that... They have a lot of people on record here. Seven former employees say their mental health was impacted by the alleged experiences working at The Tonight Show. These staffers say it was a common place to hear people joking about wanting to off themselves and that they would refer to guest dressing rooms in the office as crying rooms because that's where they would go and let out their emotions when they were upset with the alleged mistreatment. The former staffers who spoke to Rolling Stones responded anonymously out of fear of retaliation. They worked in a range of positions on the show, from production crew managers to office staffers and in the show's writer's room. So they've got, like, everyone here. Many of the former staffers say they left the show because of their mental health, and some say that they were fired. It's a bummer because it was my dream job, one former employee says. Writing for The Late Show is a lot of people's dreams. And they're coming into this, and it has become a nightmare very quickly. It's sad that it's like this, especially knowing that it doesn't have to be this way. Rolling Stones contacted more than... Okay, so this is what this is what I was thinking. Rolling Stones contacted more than 50 Tonight Show employees, past and present, during the reporting. So they were reaching out to as many as possible, and then getting people's opinions on whether they agreed or disagreed or had experiences. Okay, that may, answers my question from earlier. Rolling Stones contacted more than 50 employees past and present during the reporting. After reaching out to represent, uh, representatives of Fallon and NBC, Rolling Stones reached out to an additional 30 current and former staffers. While many of them praised Fallon's immense talent and comedic gifts, not a single one agreed to speak on the record or had positive things to say about working on The Tonight Show. So was that 80 people and not one of them is going to speak positive about him? Oi, yeah, and current people. There's current people here not going on the record because they still work there. Nor would any of the program's nine showrunners since 2014 comment on the program's namesake on the record. They wouldn't even give statements of support, which is a very common thing in the entertainment process. So that's It's very common whenever their boss is about to be thrown under the bus that they will issue statements uh, going against what the people speaking up are. But the people who are working there don't even want to release statements like, speaking up for him? Oi! Representatives for Fallon would not comment on the record for this story. On the record, they're not commenting. After this report published, however, Fallon apologized to staffers in an all-hands Zoom call. He says, it's embarrassing and I feel so bad, Fallon said. According to two people who were on the call, sorry if I embarrassed you and your friends and family. I feel so bad I can't even tell you. So on a Zoom call, he, like did a thing for all of them oh so he's guilty guilty in a statement a spokesperson for nbc defended the program but notably did not mention fallen himself why does he say fallen fallen jesus fallen fallen we are incredibly proud of the tonight show they say and providing a respectful working environment is a top priority the spokesperson said as in any workplace we have had employees raise issues they have been investigated and action has been taken when appropriate. As is always the case, we encourage employees who feel they have experienced or observed behavior inconsistent with our policies to report their concerns so that we can address them accordingly. After winning over viewers on Saturday Night Live, uh, Jimmy Fallon, got it this time, <laughs> Fallon has fallen. <laughs> Fallon cemented his reputation as one of television's most beloved entertainers when he started hosting The Late Night in 2009. His goofy, uh, musically gifted, and middle-of-the-road approach to audiences and comedy made him easily likable and appealing to the masses, and the fact that he would laugh at anything his uh, celebrity hosts and guests would say. And they could say anything. They'd be like, ah, ah, ah. It's one thing that always bothered me. For those watching at home, Jimmy Fallon didn't seem to take himself too seriously. His charisma and talent on screen brought people joy and made them laugh. It led to an abundance of excitement when it was announced that it would take over um, fully from Jay Leno in 2014. Um, 
The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon debuted to a staggering 11.3 million viewers. For the duration of its premiere season, the show competed against other late night shows, averaging 3 million and 4 million episodes or viewers per episode. The show has had no shortage of success and viral moments. Slow Jam the News is a popular segment in which political and media figures like President Obama and Brian Williams join Fallon in breaking down current events while the Ritz improvise slow jams, R&B music, and ad-libs. I love the Ritz so much. Then there's the Wheel of Music Impressions, where Fallon provides singers with prompts and asks them to do their best imitation of other artists, including Ariana Grande impersonating Celine Dion's um, song My Heart Will Go On, uh, or The Weeknd's Can't Feel My Face um, by Celine Dion. Uh, the video of Grande and Fallon's impression have been viewed 169 million times on social media. But behind the scenes, there was a surprising, dramatic, and ugly shift in the working environment, according to three employees who originally worked at... Worked? Sorry. Not they couldn't say it. They didn't say I couldn't sing. They didn't say I could say. Anyone know Victorious? Love that. There's a lot of words here for me. Come on, I'm being... Come on, please. Be gentle. Be gentle with Adam. You know I struggle with words. Okay. There was added pressure when the program transitioned. The Tonight Show is one of television's most, uh, you know, loved franchises and biggest franchises. These employees say that they felt a change uh, because Michael Shoemaker, who was at helm of Late Night during Fallon's run, didn't move over to The Tonight Show and was stuck to produce The Late Night with Seth Meyers. Does anyone watch that? The producers felt the pressure and that translated down to the employees. People that worked under them felt the pressure and you had, you know, if you made one mistake, you were gone, which is not really a good working environment. Uh, former employees were saying, you have all these MP or MPC, you have all these NBC, you have all these NPCs running about, running about. You have all these NBC pages in the building who are ready, willing, and wanting to take your job. Of course, every major television show has its share of pressure and chaos and turnover. Daily programs, even more so. But what happened at The Tonight Show was highly unusual in late-night television, employees say. The program has had six different groups of leadership teams in its nine years on TV, which isn't a good sign, by the way. Um, so in 2014, and then they have ones in 2018, 2019, 2020, all different changeovers, 2020. Basically, they're making a point here that they're losing people who are really important to the team and then getting other people, losing them, replacing them, losing them, replacing them. And, you know, switching up the working environment is, is mostly a good thing. But when you're losing that many high up, it means there's a bad environment going on. All right. I just don't think they've landed on a leader who can keep it together, one former employee said. And that's created a chaotic atmosphere among staffers, many of whom have lost faith in the senior leadership. Nobody told Jimmy. No, everyone walks on eggshells, especially the showrunners. Another former employee says, you never knew which Jimmy you were going to get and when he was going to throw a little hissy fit. Look how many showrunners have left so quickly. We know they didn't last long. With an ever-changing cast at the top, employees say that they had nightmares related to work and were in a constant state of fear because of this. One former employee said that they had their first ever anxiety attack while working on the show and were put on anti-anxiety medication for the first time. Another employee says that they felt physical ramifications of their declining mental health, like hair thinning and weakened nail beds. Four other employees say they were in therapy because of their experiences. Three people say they experienced wanting to unalive themselves because of the working environment. Oh my god, I'm like holding my breath. There's so many big words and I'm like really stressing because I don't want to mess it up. I've got this. So basically, the workers uh, want to unalive themselves. They're being put on medication that is really, really, really strong. Uh, they are losing hair. Oh my god, I have cat hair. It's like pissing me off. Fucking hell. Mentally, I was at the lowest point in my life. I didn't want to live anymore. I thought about taking my own life all the time, one former employee says. I knew deep down that I would never actually do it, but in my head I was thinking, why do I think about this all the time? Hold on, I need to get rid of this cat hair. It's on my nose. Let me get a tissue. Got it. That's... <sighs> one other employee says they'd lost nearly 20 pounds during their entire time working under the showrunner and they felt like they were on edge all the time and they would often cry themselves to sleep every single night. That sounds like a great environment. 
I knew other people who were in my department who were also very unhappy and with the mistreatment, but it was never a thing where any of us were empowered enough to say anything. It always felt like you should be grateful that you have a job here and you should be grateful that you have a position at this show at this network. Everyone wants to be in this spot. You've worked hard to be here. It shouldn't be a thing that you're ungrateful for. According to most employees who spoke to Rolling Stone, it's common knowledge that Fallon's uh, temp uh, temperament, mood, and treatment of staffers is incredibly erratic. These employees say that they witnessed Jimmy Fallon snip or snapping at crew members, expressing irritation over the smallest things, berating and belittling staff members out of frustration. Three former employees say that he berated them in front of other uh, colleagues and crew members. We're up against it was commonly used phrase in the office amongst employees. They say to warn each other if Fallon was not having a good day. So they would say we're up against it. And therefore everyone else was in for a rough day. Over the years, there have been rumors and gossip items about Fallon's addiction with alcohol, or sorry, relationship. In 2016, the New York Post ran a story alleging that NBC executives were concerned about Fallon's drinking. Fallon denied this in a New York Times profile in 2017, saying, I could never do a day-to-day -day job if I was drinking every single night. That's just kicking you when you're down. But two employees say that they saw Jimmy Fallon seemingly very drunk at work in 2017. Another two employees say that on separate occasions in 2019 and 2020, they thought that they smelled alcohol on Fallon's breath when he entered an elevator during the workday. According to eight former employees, Fallon's behavior seemed to be dependent on if he appeared to be hungover from the night before. When something was wrong, we all knew how to behave afterward, which was sort of to avoid eye contact and don't make another mistake, one former staffer said. It would happen over the smallest, smallest thing. We would have to shut the whole thing down. The sketch isn't happening, and when things like that would happen, you would just beat yourself up. The erratic nature of the talk show host's behavior led to widespread fear around those who interacted with him, employees say. Sometimes we would get nice, Jimmy, but that was not often. One employee says, it was really sad for me that this talented man created such a horrible environment for all of us here. One employee says, depending on Fallon's mood, they felt like his notes and feedback could be passive aggressive, personal insults instead of constructive criticism. They say he would write comments like, are you okay? Do you need help? Rolling Stones reviewed photos of the employee's alleged notes from Fallon that read things like, "Ugh, lame, what is going on with you? You've outdone yourself. The same employee says that Fallon would send combative emails. One of them was reviewed by Rolling Stones to certain staffers if he was dissatisfied with their work. Two employees remember witnessing Fallon scold the crew member who was in charge of his cue cards in the middle of a taping uh, with comedian Jerry Seinfeld. They say it was an uncomfortable moment. Seinfeld told Fallon to apologize to the production member, which then he allegedly did. The employees say this incident, which was awkward to watch, did not make it to the version of the show. Oh my god, who would have guessed? That appeared on television. Um. 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 Um, um, uh, do you, uh, excuse me? <laughs> this was that skit. There's Jerry Seinfeld. There's Cauldron Ballinger. And there's Jimmy. Fuck. It was very awkward, and Jerry Seinfeld was like, you need to apologize to him. My mic went out. It was very awkward, and Jerry Seinfeld was like, you should apologize to him, almost trying to make a joke of it. A former employee says, it was one of the strangest moments ever, and so many people were there, so it was hard to forget. 
Representatives for Seinfeld did not respond to multiple requests for comment. Following the publication of the story, however, Seinfeld sent a statement to Rolling Stones. This is so stupid. I remember this moment quite well. I teased Jimmy about a flub, and we all had a fun laugh about how ra rarely Jimmy is thrown off. It was not uncomfortable at all. Jimmy and I still occasionally recall it and laugh. Idiotic twisting of events. Okay. In the summer of 2020, a video of Fallon in blackface during an SNL skit resurfaced online. This came at a heightened time of racial and social awareness because of the George Floyd murder and subsequent Black Lives Matter protests around the country. The talk show host tweeted an apology for the video, saying, In 2000, while on SNL, I made a terrible decision to do an impersonation of Chris Rock while in blackface. There is no excuse for this. I am very sorry for making this unquestionably offensive decision, and thank you all for holding me accountable. He also spoke to the New York Times about the incident. While Jimmy Fallon publicly addressed the video, employees say there wasn't an internal or there was internal uproar because staff members weren't happy the talk show host didn't directly acknowledge it with them, only did it publicly. It was the first time I'd seen the video, even though I was told, oh, this resurfaced again, one former employee says. So I'm sure for many other people and other staff members, especially younger folks, it was their first time seeing it as well. The same former employee says when the clips are going viral online, senior leadership initially wanted to sweep it under the rug. I asked, are you going to use this as an educational moment? Are we going to be a pillar of change and be the role model as an example? Uh, the showrunner at the time did implement regular internal diversity and cultural meetings afterwards. And to this day, The Tonight Show has a diversity and inclusion council. Some employees say they were hopeful that he wanted to make lasting changes at the show, but they were let down a few months later whenever another person took over. She began bullying and mistreating staff, five employees say. One black employee says that Granite, who's the showrunner, kept asking them, what is going on with your hair? The employee also says they witnessed Granite make comments about how much food people would eat, saying to staffers, we're just eating a lot today and not caring about what we look like, are we? Two employees say that they were also mistreated and bu uh, bullied, bullied, intimidated, and yelled at. Jesus. Granite and Suez did not respond to multiple requests for comment. Uh, Suez, who was the one who was bullying, intimidating, and yelling at people, left The Tonight Show in 2021 when she signed a different deal with Universal, and Granite left the show in March 2020 when Miller took over the program. They are the worst bosses I've ever had in my life. They use that position to bully and or use, sorry, they use their power to bully and treat the staff in a bad way, and the network is aware of how they treat people. They continue to allow them uh, to do it, and they enable it, and they reward it. Five, they really have so many people on the record here. Five employees say they spoke to HR about their experiences behind the scenes of The Tonight Show in their exit interviews when they voluntarily left the show as well as during their time on the employment. One long-term employee says they never reported their issues to HR because early on in their time at the show, they saw employees of theirs attempt to speak to human resources and they were fired from the show. They don't protect us, the former employees were saying. They don't do anything for us. Another former staffer says they reached out to HR to express concerns they had about working under Granite. After requesting a formal meeting with HR over email, they say Granite put them on a performance improvement plan, the person they were going to the meeting because of, a step before disciplinary action, including termination. So they tried to speak up against this person, then that person found out and tried to terminate them. They say they were surprised to learn that Granite wasn't happy with their performance up until that point. The employee says they learned from HR afterward that in a, a subsequent meeting with HR, reps for NBC shared their issues and concerns, including that they were experiencing wanting to unalive themselves. They say they later saw an email exchange between HR and Granite, which was reviewed by Rolling Stones, in which HR um, then uh, denigrated the employee to Granite. This was super frustrating to me and kind of devastating because I felt it was um, I had finally had someone on my side and I quickly learned that no one was on my side, which is not. Yeah, it's not legal, by the way, to do this. It's very, very, very unethical and not legal. Everything I relate. Oh, sorry, the mic is going out for some reason. I'll fix it after the stream. Everything that I relate to HR uh, was then being relayed to my manager. 
So it was not a safe space. It was as if, that's not what HR is, by the way. So HR is doing something very wrong here. It felt as if they were acting in the interest of one person instead of the interest of the greater whole. The employee found another job, and when they had their exit interview, they said they didn't feel comfortable being honest about their experience. Uh, Granite showed up to the final meeting with HR, which usually doesn't happen during an exit meeting, trying to get them to not talk about them. It felt as though this was an intimidation tactic, they said, and I did not feel as if I could voice my experience because everything would then go back to Granite, who was sitting for the meeting. For a third employee, it was upsetting and confusing to get fired without receiving any reason especially since they were a long-term employee who had come over to The Tonight Show after working on the previous one. Sorry, I don't know what's going on with my mic. I'll try fi I promise you I'll fix it by the next stream. Sorry. Sorry. It's the spirit of Jimmy Fallon. He doesn't want me to talk. The employee says they were never given any warnings or negative feedback about their work and that they were blindsided by the firing. I ended up talking to the HR person later on the phone and she was like, yeah, I've never seen anything like this. She was like, I don't know why uh, you're being let go. You didn't do anything wrong. I've never seen someone get fired for no reason, the former staffer says. The Tonight Show went dark in early May when the writer's strike began. The show, which employs members of the Writers Guild of America, would have otherwise gone on summer hiatus later that month after NBC and Fallon himself reportedly paid staffers salaries for three weeks in the midst of the strike, employees were then put on an unpaid leave of absence. Last week, Fallon and other late-night television hosts, Stephen Colbert, Jimmy Kimmel, Seth Meyers, and John Oliver, launched a collaboration limited podcast series called Strike Force 5 while the writer's strike continues. Proceeds from the podcast will go towards the host staff members. Oh, so now we care about the staff members. Here are out of work during the strike. While the Hollywood studios have received or have recently met with the uh, WGA and negotiating committee and opened up talks again, it's unclear how much longer the strike will go on for. Um, in 2021, The Tonight Show, which is produced by Universal Television, Broadway Video, and Fallon's production company, Electric Hot Dog, was renewed by NBC until 2026. Even though there was a shift in leadership in the past year with Miller taking over, staffers say the show's track record of revolving door of showrunners as well as Fallon's alleged behavior leave them pessimistic about what the future of the show will look like. Employees say they want to see long-term changes in the work environment at The Tonight Show. They also say that Fallon and NBC, who are well aware of The Tonight Show's past issues, need to be held accountable and take employees' concerns seriously to change the environment for the better. I love The Tonight Show. I love comedy. I gave my heart and soul to that place. I want to see them succeed and do well. But for that to happen, there needs to be major changes that need to happen, starting with Jimmy Fallon, a former employee says. They all need to dig their heads out of the sand and do something that was very obvious that we all are aware of what's happening. All right. Yeah, exactly. Sending love to all the employees and all the workers who went on the record. And you know what I'll say? With this writer's strike, there is something that can happen here um this could be a time where there is a complete change in the tonight show because obviously they're out of work with the writer's strike that is the best thing that the tonight show could do they have all this time i'm talking management i'm not talking the writers i'm talking jimmy fallon himself come up with a plan to change the work environment while you're while your writers are on strike not do a shitty little Zoom call that's not to the public and all like that, right? Rework it now. This show is renewed until 2026. Rework it now. And hire morally correct and not morally corrupt HR. Protect your employees. I mean, this was shocking to have that many people on record. Wow. Well, thank you all for letting me go through that with you. Woof.